Welcome to a new season of Business Mentorship, Keeping It Real, where we introduce corporate leaders who have taken the leap to business owner and participate with their great ideas and our guest blog found on shareyourstories.online. Our guest is Dr. Shanta Haynes, a former theology professor, now founder of Truth Ministries, a company helping women reframe their story, reinvent themselves, and reimagine their future. Shanta is a money management expert and performance excellence transition coach who joins us from Tampa Bay, Florida. And it is my pleasure to introduce and welcome Dr. Shanta Haynes. Well, hello. Thank you so much, Trish, for having me here. I enjoy having coffee with you today yeah. and keeping it real. Oh, thank <laughs> you. You know, we were, it's a new year, it's a new season, and I'm so thrilled that you're our first guest to kick off um, yes. our new year. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so I have to ask, how does one go from being a theology professor to helping women reinvent and attract their best life? Well, I will tell you honestly, I, my original degree is in electrical engineering. Wow. So I went from an engineer to a theology professor to coaching now and, and empowering women like I do. But I tell my story this way. I felt like I was flying in the air without an airplane. When COVID hit, oh, my life was turned upside down. I had gone through a devastating divorce that left me heartbroken. My children grew up and they moved out. I lost my job as a theology professor because we weren't meeting in person. And so the doing that gave me purpose was now old and I did not know who I was. And to really say that I had an identity crisis, that's an understatement. And I'm sure that many people feel uncertain. And as we transition from one level to another, whether it be engineering to theology to coaching in this entrepreneurial space, we have these uncertainties. But I sat in God's waiting room with my uncertainty, with my lack of control, with the crisis, with the credentials that I had. And I recognized that I still had a message and a ministry to serve others. God doesn't waste any opportunity. So we learn the lessons and we move forward. And that's kind of what took me to this next level. It's like, what do you do now? Right. I always say, I believe the crown that we wear is the true treasure. That's the riches. And that's why we go, I go into this adjusting your crown. You have to truly reframe your story, reinvent yourself and reimagine your future. You know, that's so true because life does not, you know, it's not static, you no. know, and I usually say that every decade, there's usually some really amazing changes, whether we notice them or not, right? Some people say it's every seven years. Other people say it's every decade. But I mean, in order for us to evolve and grow as humans, we can't stay in the same place. No. Right. No, we do have to change. But the big thing is we have to recognize that life is not happening to us, right. but it's happening for us. Right. And we have to be able to pivot. When life unravels, that's what I say. You pivot. You find the collateral beauty, not just the damage. You know, if we focus on what went wrong or what's not working, then we're going to be down and depressed. We're going to feel like, oh, I got a fear of failure. Oh, I'm uncertain. I can't do. But when you focus on what did I learn? What do I now know that's different? What skills do I need to build? Where do I need to go forward? That's going to help change. And you know, I love the, your comment because one of the things that we have to do is we have to recognize when something doesn't go our, our way, go south, as we like to say, we have to give ourselves an opportunity to just sit back and relax. Yes. And sort of try to take, do a little, uh, you know, reframe your GPS, kind of <laughs> recalibrate things, right? And say, okay, that was a really awful thing, or that was a really wonderful thing, but where do I go from here? So as a person, when you're working with folks, women like myself, actually, mm -hmm. who are going through a reinvention, what would be one of the first tools or tips that you could give someone who's made a connection with you and has said, oh my gosh, Shanta, like things are just up in the air. It's chaos, utter chaos, and I don't know where to start. <laughs> Is there a little tip you can give them to sort of get them on the right track? Well, there's a lot that you can go through, but let me say it this way. Um, I've heard this before and I've seen it happen in our lives. And that's the difference between the way a woman thinks and the way men think. All right. A woman will have five degrees. She'll have 20 years of experience in an area and she will wonder, can I charge for my services? And she's like contemplating, asking her girlfriends, well, what do I do? 
a man will get on YouTube for five minutes, watch a five minute video and then charge $2,000 for that same service. So when I say we've got to reframe our story, don't take someone else's opinion over what God has said about you. When I say adjust your crown, that's really seeing yourself with the gifts, the skills, the talents, take inventory, journal if you need to, but you need to take stock of what you already have. Take stock of those lessons that you have learned that others you will be able to guide through. That then changes the game. I thought about this and I said, I was doing something new for you guys. And I thought about this story that I never shared with anybody before. I have seven books that are out, right? Uh, my last four were Amazon number one bestsellers when I launched them. When I was launching that first one that became an Amazon bestseller, I was in some kind of position where I didn't feel e either it was emotional or it was something that was just, I was off. And that's what you're talking about. Sometimes you just feel off. And I was headed to the publisher to tell them how many I wanted them to do for the pre-orders, right? And it was a local publisher, but I got my tiara out and I put my crown on. Woo! You go, girl. I love it. And I mean, that was the beginning of me saying, adjust your crown. Honestly, I walked in and it, it does something for you. Now, I know the men are going to go, I can't wear a crown. You're absolutely right. But internally, what it's saying is, I'm seeing myself for who I really am in my authentic self. And I put the crown on and some people might've thought, well, you're not dressed up like you're wearing a crown. I was wearing casual clothes, but I walked in because I needed to get my mind right. Sure. Right. It was the and confidence so, boost. Exactly. And you don't realize the small things will do that. So whether you're going through a devastating loss or you're birthing something new, you're going to need to encourage yourself. And how you do that is what I call adjusting your crown. You're recognizing I've got something to share. And like I like to say, and since we're at the beginning of the year, I said affirmations are important. You need to type. I am valuable. You need to comment it. You need to write it down. You need to say it out loud. I am valuable, one. But two, I have something valuable to share. Mm -hmm. So that when we start there, we change the whole game. Yeah, that's so true. And you know, I love that you have a visual that folks can connect with. Mm -hmm. Because you know, I have to say, I'm sure your body language, you you probably didn't notice, but our viewing and uh, the viewing audience for sure is going to notice that the minute you put that crown on, your body Ooh. language changes, right? Yeah, you sit up a little taller. <laughs> You That's smile right. a little brighter. Shoulders back. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so we, everybody, each individual needs to find their crown, right? That's right. That's right. And whatever yeah. that may be for them. For some people, you know, we've all heard of talismans, you know, like someone mm -hmm. has a lucky rock or, you know, somebody has a, a, a something that they've carried on with them as a child. You mm -hmm. know, it might be a stuffed animal or something, you know, as an adult, they still have that in a, in a place of, of, uh, power, empowerment in their office, mm -hmm. as an example. So whatever that thing is that gives you that little bit of energy boost, I yes. love the connection that you make, yes. that it's okay to it's okay. need a little boost. It's okay. Sometimes we say, I need a hug, but sometimes you don't have anybody around you to give you that hug. So you put your crown on, you say, okay, I am valuable. And I like to say this, you have to recognize what you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. And then you don't allow someone to treat you like a napkin. Oh, that's so true. And that's a skill I think that most of us struggle with at various different stages in life, yeah. right? Because mm -hmm. confidence is usually something that's fleeting. Yeah. It, it comes can. and goes. Right? Ebbs and flows. You're exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So because I mean, if we we had this accidental confidence on a 247, I think it would kind of get boring after a while because you'd be looking for that little, you know, that energy boost. And so right. confidence gives us an energy boost. It does. And sometimes if we were doing it 24 seven, we would appear arrogant. Yes. It's not the arrogance that we're saying. We're saying, I know who I am. I'm going to sit in my authentic self and I'm going to share my gifts with the world at that level. I'm not right. comparing myself to somebody else because I'm running my own race. Right. You know, I used to run track and my dad was a track coach too. And one of the fallacies that you have, and so this is what might be a tip too, never look back at what somebody else is doing. You're seeing them after they've gone through. You don't know what they've gone through. You don't know how they have gotten to that point. And you're trying to compare yourself to them. If you're 20, I'm 
I'm 61 now. Okay, if you're 20 years old and you're trying to compare yourself to me at 61, you're gonna feel defeated. You're gonna feel deflated. Don't do that. Recognize that you have something valuable to share. Uh, I say this in the reinventing yourself because we do need to build up our skills. We need to look at um, where we're going and what we're going to need for that next level. But there's some things that we have to bury. Those things are that negative self-talk, that fear of failure, the thing that says, I can't do it. There's too many people in this niche, that kind of thing. But we also have to bless some things. That means we reinvent or we reinvigorate those things. What are those skills, those gifts, those strengths that you have that you've allowed to lay dormant? And so you start building those things back up. And then the third thing you do is you bestow some of those gifts on others. And you say, I'm gonna bless others. And we say, hey, my brand, my business, my ministry is going to be the best option on this planet. Why? Because I'm giving myself to everything that I have. I'm building me first because if I'm my best self, then I can give my best self. And that's so true because one of the things that I think we need to recognize is the skills that we acquire along the way take us Mm -hmm. to the next level of success or take us to the next level in whatever it is that we choose to do in life. So, you know, acquiring skills is just Mm -hmm. part of our natural evolution. Exactly. Sometimes we think, okay, I've already arrived, but there are always things that we don't know. And so we do need those mentors, those advisors. We need that skill set booster. We need somebody to hold us accountable. Accountability, you know, we don't want to talk about that. We want to act like, oh, I can just do it on my own. I can be a solopreneur or a multipreneur, or like I say, my queenpreneurs. But I want to do it on my own. Yes, to a certain level. But you only know what you know. Right. And you're limiting yourself when you're not allowing others to then come alongside and guide you to that next level. So yeah, we always want to continue to grow and to change and to add to the gifts that we already have. So you mentioned a wonderful word. And of course, this entire series is all about mentorship. I mean, Mm. the information that you're sharing with us today could be a light bulb moment for someone in our Mm. viewing and listening audience. Have you ever had a mentor? Is there ever been someone in your life at one particular point in time that you thought, wow, that was really powerful information that I'm now going to be able to take to my next level of success? I do. I have a couple now. I actually work for another... I will say it this way. A company does pay me six figures in order to coach their coaches, their speakers, as well as their authors. But I have my own business as well. But I also recognize that the spiritual side, for me, that foundation is what gives me the resilience that I have, both on the emotional side, as well as all the financial that comes in into play. Because I told you about the money management expert, Yeah. because I've been teaching theology for 20 plus years in the biblical finance side. So I then recognize, hey, I need to improve this area. I need to be poured into A lot of times we forget that as we continue to pour out to everybody else, we can get empty. And so mentorship is so important. So yes, I do have a couple that I I allow to continue to give me training as as well as giving me the intelligences that I need, the spiritual intelligence, the relational intelligence, the entrepreneurial intelligence that I need to move forward. So no, I don't limit myself. There are too many people that we admire. I'm going to say it that way. Yeah. And we put them on a pedestal, but they all have coaches too. They all have mentors as well. And yeah. so don't think that it's strange that you say, hey, I need someone to lead and guide me. If they've gone down the road a little bit further than you have, definitely grab onto their coattail so that they can take you further faster. You know, I call it an inspirational mentor, right? Uh, You know, you may not meet them, but you may have been watching their career or they may be a leader in your community. And to your point, you know, there's that they're demonstrating skills that you think, wow, that's really very admirable. And Mm -hmm. I would like to emulate uh, that particular Mm -hmm. person or that particular skill, or maybe even learn that skill as part of your own growth and development. So I I call them inspirational mentors because it doesn't necessarily mean it's the one-to-one connection. It can Mm -hmm. just be viewing from afar, right? You're absolutely right. And what I think many of us don't recognize is so many people are watching us. They might not comment, they might not like, but they're following. So our lives should be examples for others to follow. 
and we are blessing them in that manner, even without them being clients. They don't have to right. be a client, but we want to make sure that we're depositing something. We're leaving a legacy. Or like I, I started saying now, you want to put your footprint on destiny. The wealthiest place on the earth is in the graveyard because too many ideas and dreams die there. If you've got somebody that's willing to pull you up and to allow you to get to that next level, no, none of us have gotten there by ourselves. Yeah. We didn't pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps. Don't you know buy into that myth that, hey, I was just born this way. You weren't. No, There are that's too so many true. people that helped along the way. But it is hard to find the right ones. We call them the Elizabeths, those that have been there before, those that can see the miracles before you see the miracles, that can affirm you, that can empower you, that can encourage you. And so some of my cheerleading from back in the day comes out that I'm going to be the best cheerleader for you because I want to see you succeed. So you mentioned another really wonderful phrase, and that was accountability partner. And I think that mm -hmm. mentorship and accountability partners can go hand in hand because an inspirational mentor we've talked about is a little bit different, but a one-to-one -one mentor, someone that you're actually having a connection with, they yeah. can actually also too become an accountability partner. Mm -hmm. Yes, they can put your feet uh, to the flame. They can say, hey, you didn't implement, you know, yeah. I, that's what I love to do. I say a lot of times we continue to get training and right. we never implement. So we're forever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. We're never putting it into practice. We never see the results. And so, yes, you need an accountability partner. I will say everybody needs one. I have an yeah. accountability partner. Going through the divorce, I had one because I said, hey, I did not want to be a bitter old woman. That was one of the main things that I said. But yeah. I was like, okay, I need you to hold me accountable because I need my witness to still stand. Don't right. let me do something crazy. And the right people will make sure that they're looking out for your well-being, not just right. going along with your program. So accountability is important. Mentorship is important. And community is also important. You need to be with the right people that are going to continue to encourage you to move forward. No, and that's so true. And I, and I think that one of the things that I would like to ask you is, so you mentioned you started it with a degree that is like way off left field from theology. <laughs> I mean, I mean, seriously, that is like way different than where you've ended up now, right? So exactly. what, what inspired you? Because clearly, yeah. lifelong learning is part of who Shanta is. I mean, that's very Correct. evident. The things that you talk about, I mean, you're, you've not been sitting still your whole life. You've been on the move the whole time and acquiring the skills and development along the way. What has inspired you to keep going? My faith, number one. And I will tell you, like I have a bachelor's and a master's in electrical engineering. My middle daughter passed away um, three days before her 11th birthday. Oh, I'm sorry. I had started taking theological classes at that time, just building up, okay, where am I? Where's my faith? What am I doing? Um, and God was calling me to teach at the time, uh, teach and preach. And I was like, youth was my core. That's where I began. And so that's how the theological degree started. And then I started, I was academic operations officer. I was teaching classes. I was writing curriculum. I was doing all the, the things, but the engineering never left me. When I say God never lets anything go to waste, he doesn't. I was working in the sound system. I mean, I was doing all of the technology portions, right, doing the website, the whole nine yards. I love what I do. Um, but I rec I recognize that even in doing that, you know, and I didn't get, I got a degree in Christian counseling as well. So I'm like doing all these things. And then I get the training and entrepreneurship. It's like, I can't stop. I recognize that um, as I would teach others, if you stop learning today, you top, stop teaching effectively tomorrow. Um, I got that one from um, Howard Hendricks. And I love his book on teaching. Those things are so important that we continue to learn. All right. That's what keeps me going. When you learn something new, you're going to then want to implement it. When you implement it and you share it with other people, you continue to grow. You become your best self. And so personal development is important. Spiritual development is important. Emotional development is important. Knowing that, having that self-awareness, financial development and encouragement and empowerment and independence, all of those things are important. And you can't leave any of them on the table and think right. that you're going to be your best version of you. 
Yeah, it's a that's holistic approach, about. right? Yes. You exactly. can't you can't be wonderful in one thing and let things trickle out in all the other areas because then you, you're not going to have an opportunity to be as successful as you're trying to be, right? Correct. You now, one it. of the things that you mentioned was at, we we know it's the start of a new year. This is the mm -hmm. first show in our fifth season. <laughs> What would be an affirmation that Dr. Shanta Haynes is going to use this year for her and her business? For me and my business. My word this year is expectation. Uh, one of the things that I always say to many of the students is I'm standing in tippy toe anticipation of what is yet to come. Mm. That's what I'm believing. I want to empower this year those to expect more, to believe more to increase their faith, to recognize that if you don't go for it, it's still gonna be laying on the table in 2025. Why wait? Ask for it, move forward on it, and focus your attention. I think we talked about this earlier. Where your focus goes, your energy is going to flow. If it's marketing that you need, focus on that marketing. See right. what you need to tweak. Make the changes that need to happen. But that's what I would say, stand in tippy-toe anticipation. Oh, you just don't know what is coming in 2024. I sure. say we want more in 2024, but you got to ask for it. Yes. You got to expect it. You got to believe for it. Well, you know, I think that, Shanta, you've really given us a <laughs> lot of really wonderful advice, a lot of really critical things to think about as everyone is sitting mm -hmm. back and kind of planning what they would like to accomplish for this year. And I mm -hmm. think your three words of advice that you shared in our guest blog was adjust your crown. And it. I think you've given us some really wonderful <laughs> examples of how important, whether you visualize the crown or whether mm -hmm. you actually go out and buy yourself a crown at the dollar store and wear it in front of the mirror to give yourself a little bit of huspa. I think you've given us some really wonderful insight. Do you have any closing comments that you would like to share with our viewing and listening audience about your three words of advice? Well, I will say this. Um, I woke up one morning asking the Lord why I did not achieve what I had achieved in my business that I had hoped for. This was a while ago. And what he said to me was, I did not recognize the weight that I carried. Mm -hmm. And I realized that a lot of people don't recognize that others can't do what they do. You've got a, a specific skill set and gift set that is available to you, things that you have gone through. When you recognize all of what you carry and then you share it with the world, that's how you are going to truly not only adjust your crown, but I also say we adjust the crown of others as well without telling the world that we did. Right. When we do that, we show up not only authentically, we show up with heart because we care in addition to that, because Heart to Heart Truth Ministries is my business. But you do that in a way that is authentic and it's not self-serving. Right. It's I want to be the best, not only for me, but I want to be the best example for you too. And in the, your community, right? You want to make a yes. wonderful contribution to the people you touch in your community. You're absolutely right. Well, I want to thank you very much for joining me. You've given us some really wonderful mm -hmm. things to think thank about. You. Um, thank you for joining the Share Your Stories community with your guest blog feature and now joining us here on the podcast and the, the video podcast. I really love your, your mantras. I, I think that you're giving a, and making a wonderful difference in your own community and the community at large. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Trish. And thank you for this community that you have started thank or you. have been doing now. You know, I am I am so enamored with the number of women as well as men that are in the program and those that are really helping everybody else. So definitely, you know, kudos to you for what you have done and what you have created here. It is absolutely fantastic. So thank well, you for thank allowing you. me to be a guest. Oh, thank you so much. And we we certainly look forward to all the wonderful future things that we're both going to be doing this year to mm -hmm. try to push the envelope for each other. So thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. To our viewing and listening audience, I'd like to thank you for joining us today for this edition of Keeping It Real, where we introduce you to the person behind the logo. If you'd like to connect with our guest, you'll find Shanta's contact information in the description portion below. I'm Trish Tonai, founder and host for the series. And if you're interested in sharing your business story, visit our website at shareyourstories.online. And for other inspirational features, subscribe to our channel, Business mm -hmm. Mentorship, Keeping It Real. Thanks again for tuning in, and we look forward to meeting you next time when we share another great idea.